In this video, we're going to try to solve one of the most challenging parts of having a partner with an avoidant attachment style, how to encourage them to open up and increase the intimacy in your relationship. For many people with an avoidantly attached partner, the lack of emotional intimacy is the worst part of the relationship. You probably feel like you're being kept at arm's length and I'm gonna give you the tools you need to change that. Before I do, I just want to remind you to hit that subscribe button, especially if you have an avoidantly attached partner. Over the next few weeks and months, I'm gonna be giving you loads more advice and guidance on how to build a really great, healthy relationship, and you're not gonna to wanna to miss any of it. Subscribing makes sure that you receive a notification every time I have important new help for you. Okay, so coming back to how you can build intimacy with a partner with an avoidant attachment style. Firstly, let's talk briefly about what having an avoidant attachment style actually means. Someone with an avoidant attachment style typically learned from a very young age that other people wouldn't respond to their needs. They might have been left to cry it out as babies or told that boys don't cry when they were a little bit older, anything like that. Now, when they learned that other people wouldn't meet their needs, they stopped trying. Instead, they focused on meeting all of their needs by themselves. They avoid rejection and disappointment by never asking for anything and never really trying to make any deep connections. Their avoidant attachment style isn't a way of punishing you or keeping you out. It's about protecting their vulnerable inner self. It's what they need to feel safe. When you want to build intimacy with your avoidant partner, it's important that you keep in mind that their avoidant style is trying to achieve. It's trying to keep them safe and it's gonna kick in hard any time they feel threatened, vulnerable or unsafe. And building intimacy is all about feeling vulnerable. So now you can see why it's so difficult for them to open up and build intimacy with you. So what can you do to make it easier for them? Well, the first thing you can do is to remember the phrasing I just used. You're not trying to make them open up. Your job is to make it easier for them to choose to open up. That's a very different mindset and it's gonna be really important to them. Once you understand that your aim is to empower them to open up, your next step becomes clearer. Your goal is to make sure that your avoidantly attached partner feels safe and respected for who they already are. Now this can be difficult, especially if you find their avoidant nature frustrating. They will often pick up on that frustration and feel as though they're being pressured into being someone that they're really not. I'm sure you can imagine just how uncomfortable that must feel. When you get frustrated, try to remind yourself that this is something they learned years ago to protect themselves and it has protected them. It's out of date and it started causing problems in your relationship, but it's been important to them in the past and they might not be ready to let go of it yet. I know it's hard, but try to appreciate it for keeping them safe and accept them for who they are right now, flaws and all. The next step towards increased intimacy with your avoidantly attached partner is to talk to them about, about what it means to need someone and what you do and don't expect people to support you with. This can't be a conversation where you try to demonstrate to them that they're wrong or educate them. If nothing else, they're not. They value independence and self-sufficiently more than you do, but that's not right or wrong. It's just different. Instead, try to listen with an open mind, share your interpretations and experiences and ask them about theirs. Give them examples of ways that other people have supported you and what it meant to you. They may never have had anyone support them like that. And they might genuinely struggle to understand what it means and how it works. Encourage them to ask you questions as well. If they ask questions, you might start to realize that some of your thoughts and responses aren't quite as intuitive as you thought they were. The next step is to show them that you're not gonna to try to control their behavior. Again, this isn't always easy. If your partner isn't living up to your expectations, it's easy to criticize them and to feel justified in telling them that they have to do something differently. This isn't working for you. Unfortunately, this will probably backfire. Not only will they not change their behavior at your insistence, but they're gonna be a lot less willing to open up and build that intimacy. Instead, try to make requests that respect their autonomy and their independence. For example, rather than saying, you need to call me if you're going to be home late, you could say, I worry when you're out late without warning me. I don't need to know where you are, but would you be able to just send me a really quick message so that 
I know when you're going to be home approximately. It would just set my mind at rest. Can you see the difference? Now, another thing that can make it much easier for an avoidant partner to open up is when they feel as though you respect their need for space and autonomy. So rather than waiting for them to ask for space, why don't you suggest times that they can spend time alone? This shows them that your respect for their need for independence is actually genuine. You can also let them set the time and pace of emotional conversations. Avoidantly attached people can be really hard to read, which means that they could be stressed, anxious, or frustrated, and you wouldn't know about it. This makes it really hard for you to pick a good time to have a deep and meaningful conversation. So sidestep that issue. Let them choose the time for your conversations. Explain what you want to talk about, but that you know they dislike these kinds of conversations. Say that it's important to you that the conversation happens, but that maybe they could let you know when they're in a good emotional place to actually start talking. Now, if you're going to do this, it is important that you don't let them delay the conversations indefinitely. We're all capable of procrastinating on something that we don't want to do, and avoidantly attached people are experts at it. You might want to give a gentle reminder, such as, I do still want to talk about X when you have some time. You might also need to pause conversations partway through if they start to check out or become emotionally overwhelmed. You might feel this as their emotional walls just coming straight back up again, or they might just be sitting there almost unable to say anything at all. Now, this is really scary and unpleasant for the person shutting down as well as for you. So remember what I said earlier, making them feel safe should always be at the front of your mind. If they're shutting down emotionally, that's a really good sign that they don't feel safe at all. If that happens, tell them that you're pausing the conversation. Don't ask, just tell. Try to give them space whilst also being there for support. This might mean just sitting quietly in the same room as them without trying to talk or touch them. Generally though, it's better if you stave off this kind of withdrawing before it happens. Check in regularly during the conversation to see whether they're okay and show them that you'll listen and respond if they tell you that they do need a break. Finally, make sure that you have a wide support network to offer you the care and validation and support that your avoidantly attached partner might struggle to provide. Your avoidantly attached partner will probably feel overwhelmed if they're expected to be your sole source of support and care. Knowing that you're able to turn to friends, family, or even a therapist helps to take the pressure off of them. It may also make you less likely to want to cling to your partner or put pressure on them to be more emotionally available than they're ready for. Luckily, the less you demand, the more comfortable they're likely to feel about actually opening up. So those are the most helpful things you can do to help your avoidant partner to feel safer opening up and build more intimacy. How does that compare with your experience? Have you ever managed to get an avoidantly attached partner to open up? What made the difference? What did you say? Or maybe you have an avoidant attachment style. What would make you feel comfortable enough to be more intimate? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, please do like and subscribe. That's all for today. I'll see you soon.